everybody. My name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. Well, we're getting towards the end of June. I don't know how that happened. We literally just got back from vacation and it was like the last day of May and now it's almost the end of June. But because it's at the, almost the end of the month, it means it's almost the end of our designer series paper sale that Stampin' Up! is having in June. Um, my goal at the beginning of the month was to make as many projects using as many of the papers that I could get to that were on sale. So we're getting there. I don't know that I'm gonna get them all in. And the funny thing is, is I ordered one um, paper and it's, I was gonna use it next month in club. So I thought, well, this is perfect. It's not on sale. <laughs> so um, that one, I will probably sneak it in here, but it's not on sale. So I think that maybe there's just one or two that I haven't gotten to. I know the space one I haven't used and maybe Zany Zoo. I think those are the two. And they're both great papers. So I'm going to try to get to them. And then I will have a recap video um, towards the, like a couple of days before the end of the month. I haven't done it yet because I don't have cards <laughs> with all of the samples. So today we are going to do the Let's Go Shopping. Unfortunately, I just have scraps of this. It's Let's Go Shopping paper. I'm just trying to see if I have a whole one with houses. Yes. So see, they come like this. And then the other side, you get that. So for my piece, I debated between this one. I ended up going with this piece. So this is our background. And here's some more houses. So you don't have to buy the stamps, but the stamps are really fun. And we're going to make a shaker card because, you know, if you have windows, that is the perfect time to put some window sheet on for real and make some windows. Move that where it's not going to fall, hopefully. So I'm going to use the stamp set. I'm going to use the dies. I... I'm going to use some sequins, and then I'm going to use, I'm going to do all of my stamping on um, watercolor um, paper. We have a new set of watercolor pencils in the um, catalog that just came out in May. So it added, let me see if I can, um, the pecan pie, obviously, the fresh freesia. So it kind of mixes the colors. I have so many, I have like six sets of watercolor pencils all up just of different variations um, and I just keep them in a cup by my table. These are brand new so they're still in their box but you, that way you can mix and match and if one needs sharpened and you're going along it doesn't slow you down. Then I'm going to use Calypso Coral and then the window sheet which I don't get out until I need to use it otherwise it gets dirty. Picks up all the little dusties from your desk. So let's get going on this. It's a really easy card, but I am going to show you how to use the dies and then how to um, put together the shaker card. All right, let's do our stamping. I'm going to just use Memento, which works really well um, on the watercolor. You could use Stays On if you want. I think the Memento soaks into watercolor cards stuff a bit better, but you can always refresh like freshly re-ink your stays on and it would work well too because we're using water. So when I put it on here, I'm going to hold it just a little bit longer than what um, you would on normal paper to give this really thick porous paper time to soak that ink in. So when I did mine the first time, I hadn't used this and I don't tend to watch like any how-to videos because I like to figure them out. Stampin' Up! really has to come out. Uh, usually if I watch it, it's because it's building something. Like there's some engineering to a die. But most of the time I like to figure it out myself. So now I'm going to do um, the other floors. I'm putting two floors on this particular shop. The first time I did it, like I said, I just stamped it all together, which if you're not cutting it out, that's the way to do it. Obviously you don't want these holes in between your floors if you are going to, um, isn't that pretty? Um, do it all together. But because we're cutting this out, the first time I did it, because I stacked them, when I put this middle die here, it like cut into both, which is fine because when I glued it back together, it all glued together fine. But that's not the, I don't think that's the easiest way to do it. And I'm gonna use this little pot. There are a bunch of accessories I'm not using. So check out the stamp set to see what's missing. And then this is the awning. And it kind of matches this. So the whole color combination from the card and the reason I went with this piece of paper is because I liked the way the awning matched. And there's an, there's two awning dies, one that will cut this out with some frillies on it and then an, an overlay if you don't use the stamp that will add some decorations that way. So there are there's things that go in the shop 
but those need to go in the shop. So if you stamp them here, when you die cut, you're gonna lose them. So it, this card does have a couple of different steps that aren't the same order you might usually use something. You know, let's see where I put my scissors. So here's a story for you. My husband nicely washed my car for me because um, you know it's summer and if you live in a place like we do where it's cold and rain, cold all winter and then rainy, it, like stuff just accumulates, right? In those months in your car. Um, and so then it, my car looks fabulous. It looks really good. But we were in the car yesterday and I needed my scissors, my snips, because I have snips in my car with a little guard on them. And I'm like, where did you put my scissors? And he said, well, I didn't know you need scissors in the car. So then my daughter got in the car and she's like, I need your scissors. And I said, your dad took them out. And he's like, I don't understand the scissors in the car, but it's a great place to keep those snips. And because they have that little guard on them, it, they're just perfect for keeping in the car. So now I have to remember to find a, either one of my pairs that has the guard. So we have these two and then there's other, it takes, you could do this quicker, but because I want you to see it and because I'm going to edit part of this out, I'm just going to do it this way. Because if I was doing this myself, I would layer these back on here and do the second pass, but I'm not going to because I want you to see how to do it next. So I'm going to cut these three things out now. So this is going to cut the window out for this to make our window sheet. I mean our windows for the shaker card. And then this is going to cut all three of these windows out at the same time. All right, so now we have all of our pieces, but we need to get our stuff stamped inside. And I like to do it before I color so I can just color everything at once. So I'm gonna grab another piece of this. On my other one, I just used a scrap piece, but oh, you guys can see a pretty piece. So you just kind of lay this on here. And because our seal is repositionable, I think it kind of helps. I'm just gonna use a tiny, tiny dab of seal and then I'm going to make this go off the edge of the card so you don't waste any more card stock than you need. It does need to be straight on here, otherwise your stuff's going to be crooked. If you have your Stamparatus, you could, I'm sure there's a way with the Stamparatus that you could do this, but since we don't sell it anymore, I'm not going to take the time to figure that out, but I'm sure that there is a good way. So we have this one here. Just like that. So when I did my other one, this is gonna be a little bit taller be because these are touching and not grooved into each other. And I'll show you at the end when I what I mean about that. You could have stuck a bit more adhesive on there. So let's take, let's do our little lights first. So the lights go inside the windows. I think they could also be hangers too. I think there's a way that you could just add a little bit of your own black ink and make them be hangers. So we're just gonna aim right inside those windows just like that and then right inside these windows now for this one I am going to use the little bake shop there's other ones that you can use it is bigger than this so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my scissors and you want it to be a tad bit higher the reason I went with the bakery and not the chairs is because it's a shaker cart and it, often the sequins end up at the bottom and this I can get a little taller I'm just gonna take my pencil, just hold it right under my photopolymer, and I'm gonna mark that. But then I don't wanna take all this apart, I mean, and then have to put it back together to figure out how big this needs to be. I'm just gonna hold this here. It needs to be obviously a little bit littler. So this is making the back of our card. It doesn't have to be straight. It just needs to be the size that you can stick all this stuff onto in just a second. Because we need to put our sequins in there, we need to put our window sheet on there, but I also needed to be able to stamp that. I hope you understand why I did it that way. Because now when I take this off, um, if, when, if you have this set, you'll see, because the bars on this would stamp right on the outside of your shop, and obviously we want it all on the inside. So now I'm just gonna kinda take these apart to color them and then let's go back and get our so just kind of aim that was kind of the center and towards the bottom this piece is pretty forgiving if you're going to use the chairs you don't want them to be floaty but see now when I put this on here maybe if I can hold it that's going to be inside 
and then the pencil just got covered up with that. So I think that's all the stamping. You could stamp on the inside. I just didn't because I know this card's going to take a minute. So we have all of our pieces and I am going to do some of the coloring on camera for you and some I'll finish off. But I want you to see how I use my watercolor pencils in more of a artistic way than, than sometimes we do because they're great for a quick, quick color. They're great for taking on the road because this is everything you need for color. And if you get two sets, then you'll have all the all the colors that you could possibly need. I'm gonna make it work with the one. So I want my um, color scheme to be the blue and the Calypso. And then I want my house to be gray or shop. So I have basic gray. And for this, I'm just gonna color this bottom one and then I'll do the same on the top. So I color pretty hard over here on the one edge this is going to give you enough color that you can keep pulling it over. So I'm going to color about half of it. And I'm pressing hard. This is brand new and I've only used it on the one card that I've done. But you can sharpen them and I have, they'll, they'll last you for years. So don't be afraid to really use the color. So that's about halfway. And then I'm going to do each of these up here, there's like three levels. And you could be more, if you want it to be more fun colors in the paper, some of them were more fun and some of them are more artistic or realistic. Depending on which sheet of the paper that you're using. So I have that on there. And then I'm gonna be able to use some of the leftover colors. You can kind of just add a little bit. I'm gonna add that, and then I'm gonna show you how you pull it all the way over for those. So then here's where our um, colors can come in from the paper. Make a nice fun blue door. It is navy in the paper, I think, and we do have a navy pencil in one of the other sets. But I just wanted to use this one, and if you wanna tone it down, but I like the bright blue door. So have this, and then um, this little scallop here, I did it also in the blue. So just kind of draw your ink along. You can fill it all in with the water in just a second. And then my awning, I did just some blue, and you don't have to press as hard. That way this will be a little bit lighter, and that way you can kind of control all the different shades. It's not gonna look like you used exactly the same amount of color. And I'm gonna get my Calypso, and do my door. You can see I'm pushing pretty hard. And then you can just color if you wanna just color with these. You don't have to use the water part. Oh no, there's, sounds like there's a emergency vehicle in our neighborhood. That's not anything you ever wanna hear. And then I'm just gonna go up here, just add these little lines of Calypso there. So now let's paint this in. I'm gonna use my water painter. And have a this handy to kind of squeeze the water. We make make sure it started it, where it says push. That's the side you want to push. If you push the other two sides, the water is not going to come out as fast, or at all, depending on how you do it. So let's start with the calypso. You don't want to have a ton of water on here, but it needs to be enough to move the pencil around. So you start where all the ink is. And then as you pull it over, there's plenty of um, color to move all the way over here. And if there's not, if you feel like you need more, then just add, just take your pencil and add some more. And I'm gonna show you, this is when you use it direct to the paper on the flowers. We're gonna do a little bit of um, using it more as a paint. So with all of these, I kind of just do it once and then I go back and if there's anything I wanna add, I do all of the adding of pencils at the, the end. So this has some fun shading on it now. 
just like that. And let's do the blue. So you always start where the ink is so you can have some color on your brush. And again, you do need to have water, otherwise it's just gonna do nothing. Pull it over. And if you go the same direction, that's why I'm going this way on all of it, it will give you the illusion of the light shining on the house. Our little awning up here. And this in here. And I intentionally used less color of blue up here to keep this lighter than the, my door. Okay, now we're going to do the gray. So I'm going to start all over here where I have gray in the, um, the darkest that I colored, and then we'll pull it over. Go ahead and get the stairs, and this will get some of it off, and see how the, you have two shades of gray now, because I didn't color much on there, and then you need to stop, because if you keep going, it will all be the same. The nice thing about these two is you can see up here where I didn't really color in the scallops, you can get your water in there and it will look good. I didn't add anything to my the frames of my window and I thought about making them uh, the blue or the calypso to make it kind of fun, but I ended up just going more, a little bit more of a realistic look. So I'll show you. We're gonna do the same thing with those that we did with the stairs down there. So keep pulling this over. And I'll have some up close pictures on my website so you can see it a little bit better. So we have that and you can see it gets lighter and lighter. Now I'm going to come over here and get just a little bit so it's on my, and I just color it all the way in. I didn't leave that part where it doesn't cut with the dye. That way it doesn't have a white line. It looks like it's all some form of brick. Then there is a white pencil. I guess I need to do my little nail slot. Um, and I meant to color my other one white, my little sign on the door and I forgot. So there's this and this, and then these will be exactly the same as that. So I'll do those off camera. So now let's move to all of our little accessories. And for these I took the this is espresso oh, it's not all popped out yet but it's sometimes easier to pop it out once it's been colored and a little wet and then we have some fun greenery and again, i'm doing the same thing and then i'm going to take this and i'm going to give it just right here in the middle to kind of terracotta ish just there in the middle. And then I want this to be like the stalk that all my flowers are growing on the stems. So I'm just gonna give it a light coat of the espresso. And then obviously this is gonna be some green and I'm gonna color pretty hard. It's also easier, I think, on some of these if you do it before you trim them out because they're tiny. So we have that. And then I have these here. So the first time I'm just gonna kinda go through, and this is Old Olive. And I'm gonna kinda give some green. You need to be careful because these are pretty dainty. And these, it would be harder to do what I'm gonna do if you didn't cut them out. So you just have to be careful. So add that green, but I'm gonna be able to pick up some of that green there too. So let's do that part first. green here. And while I've got a bunch on here, I'm going to take it over here and see where that, just that little bit of green, I should have gotten a clean piece of paper. Kind of, you can tell I used um, inked and tiled. But just that little bit of lead added 
some color and I don't want it to be the same color as this. So I'm good with it being that way. And now that we've got that pulled over, pull that over. Then let's do our pot because again, this is gonna give me some ink on my brush. Let's do this one while I have that little bit of Calypso in there because I don't, it doesn't, that's going to mostly get covered up. I love that the little bench has all of the pieces of wood kind of cut into it with the embossed part. And then let's come here. Just kind of get that on. And then I'm not going to show you this because it is breads and cakes and then the lights. The lights are just going to be the basic gray. These you can just do a variation. I did the breads all in the espresso and then I added the cakes, a little pop of color, and I'll show you them after I do it. But I do want to show you one of these. Actually, it's probably going to be both. So for this, I'm going to go direct to my pencil. You get a little bit more color and it's a little bit more controlled. So I just wanted to add, this is just literally leaves. So I wanted to do some faux flowers. And just kind of add, this is Mambo. And then I'll come over here while I have it on here and what as well. And this has a like a, a frosted cake or a cake cover. And you don't have to be too super fancy with these because it's going to have the shakers over the top of it. So you can see I added one color and then you can go back and grab a little bit more. You just kind of pop that on. It's gonna give us a little bit of that fun London, my shop is covered in flowers feel. And then for this one, I am going to clean it because there's such little color. If you let them mix, then they'll all be the same color. This is Daffodil Delight. I'll do the same thing on here. And it's just tiny little, like I'm barely touching it, just enough to give it the illusion that there's some flowers on there. And then we'll have the daffodil on here. I'll just add it to one of the cakes. And I'm also going to add just a little bit of the sun highlight onto my breads down there. And I'm going to squeeze this off again. If I use this much yellow, when I touch the other tip, it's going to, if I use red, it's going to be orange. And then when I use the pumpkin pie, it's going to just be. So here's fresh freesia. And I don't think I did maybe just three colors on my other one. And part of it's determined by once you start going with it and you're using such little color, the fresh freesia almost looks like the Mambo. So we'll just move on because I'm not putting very much on here. And here's where it can be a little bit artistic with the tiny, tiny little pieces in here. I'm gonna do my pie pan in freesia. Because where there's more color, it's obviously not pink, it's purple but when you're do, using the tiny little drops. And then let's go, we have red and we have um, pumpkin pie. So I do want the real red because I'm gonna make my little holders on here be red. Cause they kind of look like they could be a cherry, but they are the tops to the ore. Um, cake pans, but over here, I think it, it is a cherry on top of the pie. Maybe, who knows? And then add just a couple of pops of red on here. And some of it can stay white because obviously if there's flowers, some of them might be white. So all of it doesn't have to be colored. And then we have the pumpkin pie. I'm do the bottom of my cake plates. I think on my other one, I did them all in different colors, but I'm trying to get this done so you don't have to keep watching me. 
And then I'm gonna go on and I'll finish painting the rest of this and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so everything's colored in. Now we just have to put it all together for our um, shaker card. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to get some window sheet out. I like to keep it in here because like I said, it picks up all kinds of stuff that's on your table and static electricity. So I know that it needs to be about this big, right? Cause this is gonna cover all of the windows. If it's this big, it covers the windows and your window sheet can't be bigger than what you're adding it to. Otherwise you can see it's got static on it. Otherwise it will stick out the sides. Let's get that. I love window sheet. There's so many things that you can do with it, but it's always fun to go back to its original use, right? A window. So we have this. This is going to be our background, but it's, the window is going to actually attach to this. And it's going to be what holds our house together because it's in parts. So I'm going to start here. A generous amount of adhesive. Make sure sure it covers up your entire window. Otherwise you'll have pieces falling out. So we have that. If we have to trim it at the other end, that will be okay. Now I can tell on this one, I accidentally stamped my lights a little bit on here. It doesn't matter because when you put it together, nobody's going to notice. So that means this one is going to be my middle. Add some adhesive on this. And then we'll just puzzle piece this together. Now, if you did it the other way, like I did it the first time, these will match exactly because you will have cut them out from the same piece of paper. This way gives you a little bit more leeway. Whoops, I was trying not to drop it on the table. Um, as far as how you stick it together, but it is gonna make my building a little bit taller. I'm trying to make sure I have a window sheet under all that. There we go. And then we have our last piece. Add some adhesive, and you want to add it to this. You don't want to put it on your window sheet, otherwise it'll show through your windows. Pop this back over here. So make sure it's straight, but also make sure that you have windows underneath. So we're good. You can tell a little bit easier on this side to make sure that your window went everywhere. It's, it might stick out a little bit of a fraction there, but we're pretty good. Now we need to add whatever you're gonna use to make it have enough space in between so it will pop up. So I'm gonna use the foam adhesive sheets. We have the strips, they would work too, but this way, because this is little and it's kind of funky sizes, this is gonna allow me to um, trim them the way I want because this can be pretty thin because it's gonna end up having quite a lot on it. So there's a couple of different ways when you do shaker cards. Obviously, I can just rectangle the whole thing out and call it a day. But then what happens is when you shake it, everything goes to the bottom. And I want some of my sequins to stay on the different floors, especially because I'm using those clear ones and it's gonna look fun behind the lights. So I've pulled off one section and I'm going to do each floor on its own. Again, you wanna make sure it doesn't go through. So it, you don't wanna see the white through the window. Put all a little section to start first, just underneath all of the windows. And I'm cutting this a little bit thinner than if I'd use the ed ed foam sh um, strips. So now all of them have something to stop the sequence from disappearing all the way down to the bottom. Now we can start up here. And now I'm just gonna kind of go for however long my pieces are. So each of these will be a little rectangle. You don't wanna have a giant empty area because then one, you have to remember every all the sequins need to be inside of something that's gonna contain them. But also if I don't put some a little bit of something over there, then that part of my card will kind of sink down because you need to have a dimensional, would even work there, but it has to have something to hold it up. So I'm gonna rectangle this part out. And if you wanna use fewer sequins, you could put another piece in there, but I'm good. The sequins are large enough, they hold their own on this card. 
have that. And then I'll show you what I mean by this over here. Cause I don't want my sequins. They don't need to, I don't need to waste sequins going all the way over there. Let's rectangle this one out. This is gonna give me a little bit of extra, just a fraction. So I'm going to put it here on my awning. I'm gonna start using my scraps over on the pieces I know that I wanna pop up on the other side. So you can see this, while I'm making lots of sections, it's not using a ton of my adhesives. All right, so you can see that I've just pulled the backing off and each one of these, I didn't pull that backing off. You think you get it all and then it catches in the light. So there's three sections. Now you gotta get this here with the lights matched up and your shakers in the inside. So you'll wanna take, I've done lots of die cutting. I have little things everywhere. These are the loose silver sequins and they are in the um, annual catalog. So I'm going to take and lay some, you wanna be generous, but you don't want it to cover up your design. So I'm gonna lay these in this window cause we know there's a window there. We know there's a window here. And then there's a window here. So kind of have them evenly spread. Always use more than what um, you think you should, especially when you're doing a card like this because you get the one shot. So if you do all this work, you flip it over and you put it together and there's not enough to see them shaking, then it was just a waste of time. So be overly generous, but my things are pretty small. Probably get a tad bit more in here. If you did the whole card, you could put them just straight in the center. It'd be a little bit easier to do this flippy part if you just had one. Now here is one thing that I found on, because these can stick straight up, you wanna make sure none of the sequins are going up because otherwise it's gonna stop this from going down. Now you can see over here, I just put one little piece of adhesive so this part of your card doesn't collapse. You need to have something to keep it up there. Now you just kind of start at the top and actually when you over stamp, it gives you a great place to start lining those up there. So just kind of lay it down. That looks pretty good. And now you can press it all on. So that wasn't scary, was it? And see, with them all in here, it looked like there were a ton, but there's not a ton of sequins in there. Because once you once they spread out over the area, I just love that. I think it's so cute. I love the way these kind of just make it look like it's lit up in there. And everybody loves a good shaker card. So now we just have to stick this together. I don't have any other embellishments. There's no other ribbon. So we have our Calypso, but I did forget to tell you because we're using two invisible pieces of paper on here that um, I also did cut a piece of vellum that's a little bit smaller to go over this to kind of mute it, but you obviously still see that it's the pattern. So let's start with this. I hate when I have to cover up, I mean, yeah, cover up a good side of the paper because those houses are fun or shops. And then this, it doesn't matter where you put your vellum. I don't know why I flip them over when I do that because the shop's gonna go right on top. So put this on. And then you wanna make sure that you give a good amount of adhesive on this. You could use glue if you want because it is a little heavier and people are gonna shake it. So most of our cards, if um, we let people just shake them all up, then they might come apart too have that. Now let's add all of our little highlights. So first we'll add the, the flowers. I debated if I want where I wanted it. Um, I really wanted it here because that I think is more true London on the actual top front. But for the aesthetics of the card, I went up here. So first just add this and then I'm going to switch to some glue for a couple of these. There's not a whole lot that you're working with on these two, and I'm gonna put something on top of it. And then we have our little, well, they're stuck together now. Attach this to that one. This is all gonna lay flat in just a second when I cover, put something heavy on it for a, a tick.
You could do that back piece if you want to do a green so it kind of gives more greenery. Make sure you don't put the side that has your inked image if you haven't cleaned off your stamps. And the nice thing about using a block to do this is you can see if they've moved. So down here, I'm gonna take, this is a piece that I have cut around over time and I just keep sliding it back in there. It works great to use it up. For this, you can use a dimensional. So this little piece here, I just need a tiny little piece more to add to my awning. And this is also why I put the flowers at the top because this has this down here. So just add your awning to your main window. And then at the very end, once it's all together, then you can kind of see, oh, I already cut that. If the like the way that you've colored it, if the light reflecting looks good, if you're pleased with it, if you want anything to be a little bit darker, but there's really no reason to do it until you get the whole card put together and kind of see how it's all fitting together. See the light post looks super cute, but there was no, you, you either have to do the light post or the bench. So I went with the bench, but you could do either. This one, I'm gonna have it kind of go out over the vellum. Now I wanna put this here, um, but you can see if I put it here, it's gonna smash. So I'm gonna use a tiny bit because on this, I can get a super tiny bit of my foam. Those of you that are in my card club, next month in club, every month you can always add an adhesive pack. It doesn't include some of the more obscure, let's call them adhesives, but next month that will be part of your, um, there'll be a special package if you wanna add some of this because I've been using some of them a lot. So now we have this, but this isn't gonna stick here. So I'm gonna take my glue and just a little bit, just to help keep it stuck to it down to the card. So two different adhesives to make this sit the best way. Isn't that bench adorable? So we have that and that. It's going to need another block for just a second. And I'll show you this one. Here's the other one. And you can see on this one where this was stamped as one big piece. And then I added, I just puzzled that back together. It makes your house a little bit smaller, just a fraction. Here's where my bench is on here. Um, Fun, shaky. Otherwise, they're all gonna pretty much look the same. I stamped over on that one as well. Not as much as I did on the other one. I can blame this one on looking at the, um, so we have that. Sometimes the glue on those tiny things oozes out. So I just wipe it up real fast. Some of my blocks still have glue on them, but they're meant to be used, right? This probably needs a fraction more. Look how cute that is. Then you can stamp, I'm gonna stamp in the um, inside, let's get together. I'm not gonna take any more time because this has been a longer video, but I, the effort is well worth it. How much fun would this be? And I'm probably gonna do it so nobody steal my idea and do it before me. I'm gonna make a Christmas version of this um, on one of our new Christmas papers. I haven't looked at the papers to see which one would, they might be a little bit too realistic in this particular pack, so I might have to wait till the new catalog comes out. But what a fun little, um, like Charles Dickens style house. And you can put snowflakes in it um, and have it be a Christmas version. Send it to those super special people on your list. So everybody have a great week and I will catch you back here later. Do stop by. I will have a video that has a kind of a recap of the papers. Um, you want you to see a couple of um, peaks from things that I've done in private classes. So you won't get the the house you want them, but I might show you some of the samples, especially the ones that I don't have time to get to to actually make a card. So I have used all of the paper. I just haven't used it all on my public channel. Everybody have a great week. Bye.